You are tuning in to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown, the official podcast for the Atlanta Realtors. We're here to keep you updated with the latest trends, topics, and keep you in the know of our ever-changing Atlanta market. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown. I'm your host, Manny Racinos, and I am extremely excited to say that I am sitting in studio with none other than our Atlanta social media guru, Matt LaMarche. Matt, how are you? I'm doing really well, man. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. I know that uh, a lot of people know you here at the Atlanta Realtors Association, and um, we really wanted to uh, get a chance to know you a little better, learn from you. So um, let's get started. I want to first introduce everyone to uh, Matt LaMarche. For those who don't know, a little background on him. Uh, I don't know if he knows it, but I mean, he's one of those Georgia unicorns. <laughs> he was actually born and raised here in Georgia. Is that correct? That's right. I think I'm like the last, one of the last 10 or so left here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it's, it's not easy to find. Um, so I just wanted to kind of hear a little bit about your journey, how you got into real estate. I know you've uh, operated other businesses and that kind of thing. So if you could kind of share with us, how what was your journey? Sure, yeah. So, you know, growing up, always in a very entrepreneurial family. Both of my grandfathers were entrepreneurs. And I just, I always felt like I was very entrepreneurial. Like as a teenager, I was out mowing lawns and washing cars and, you know, anything I could do to make money because that was always a big motivator. Uh, but my first business I started actually failed pretty miserably. I wasn't in real estate in 2007, 8, and 9, but my, my wife was. And uh, we had actually just gotten married in 07, and my first business failed pretty miserably. About the same time, real estate started taking a turn, and she was a buyer's agent, actually, on, on, a, uh, on a team at the time. So uh, first couple of years of, of business, on my own at least, were rough, and business vaporized, clients all went away. And uh, I actually thought about getting my license then, but I didn't, and thank goodness I didn't, because I had a lot to learn <laughs> about business and marketing and sales and everything. So I went back into corporate America, uh, worked for a recruiting company, a lot of Fortune 500 companies in sales and marketing roles, um, but ultimately found myself kind of back in this entrepreneurial thing about, I don't know, five or six years ago, and really just kind of feeling like life is short, I really want to enjoy what I'm doing every day. Started a lawn care and landscaping business, and I was like, okay, if I can't when at this, I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. Anyone can cut grass, <laughs> right? But I really enjoyed it. And, you know, honestly, the instant impact that you get from spending 30 minutes, an hour in your yard or other people's yard, you know, it's it's something that here in my city of Sandy Springs is very needed. Um, no one cuts their own grass in Sandy Springs. So we moved here about 11 years ago and then uh, about five or six years ago started that business, got got it grown and, and built up to a point where I could actually sell it uh, and then slowly but surely made the transition into real estate. And there was about a three month overlap there, uh, Q1 of uh, 2019, but that's where I was able to really focus in on real estate, go 100% into it. I sold my lawn care business in March. I closed a week later on my first deal. Uh, I helped my first buyer in March of 2019. So it was all good timing. It was like, okay, I can actually do this. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, amazing. So we started making it happen. And uh, now I've been in the industry for a little over three years. Um, you know, our first property was our first investment as well. So I'm very investor friendly and minded uh, as an investor myself. I understand the black and white nature of their business, but I also help first time home buyers and people downsizing and right sizing and everything else now. So uh, as a licensee, it's been exciting to get into something that, again, you know, 12, 13 years ago, I had a desire, but man, talk about timing. Timing was not right. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally hear that. You know, what's interesting is I hear your story relating a lot to other successful people's stories in real estate, and that is you were around it for a bit, mm -hmm. right? You got to learn from it while you weren't in it completely, sure. right? Yeah. Especially as you saw some of the stuff happen with your wife and the, the market in 2007 and all of that stuff. So that that's really interesting. So once you got started into real estate, at what point did you say, okay, there's this platform that is, I'm assuming, free at the time, mm -hmm. and I can take advantage of it? When did that kind of happen? When did that click? Yeah, so I, I really got started with like social media and stuff um, actually before even my lawn care business. I was learning, I was you know trying to figure out how could I sell my service? How could I sell myself to people that would appreciate you know the art or the science, if you will, behind keeping your grass as green as possible and taking care of your lawn, you know your lawn and your landscaping. And uh, I mean, it's, especially now in real estate, you know that 
that's a big value add. Like people look for good landscaping. I, yep. You know, curb appeal is a big deal. Yep. And so I got into Snapchat. Snapchat, for those of you that don't know, it's, I don't know if it's really still around or not anymore, but uh, I know it kind of had its moment. And I was there and I had built up a pretty, you know, successful following of about 3,500 people a day watching my stories. Um, and, you know, really just kind of documenting my journey as an entrepreneur, but also as a small business owner. And the challenges that came up, the, the, the wins, the losses, the good, the bad, and the ugly I share pretty much every day. Yeah. And, um, and it was interesting because most of the people that were watching me took care of their own lawn. So a lot of people were like, you know, this isn't the right audience for you. And I was like, well, yeah, but they know people. Mm -hmm. And man, if you talk about like the perfect transition then into real estate, everyone knows a realtor. I think the average is nine. Actually, every person out there knows nine real estate agents. I believe it. I was worried that I had to stick out among the 14,000 of our members here, <laughs> but I just have to stick out among the nine that you other people know, right? So for me, social media has been a definite journey. I think a lot more, um, you know, we'll talk about Gary Vee here in just a little while. He's been a major influence in, in my social media, you know, documentation and creation process. But that's exactly how I think about it. I think of, of it as a documentation it's not I'm trying to create super unique or viral content. Like, that's not the point at all. In fact, I'm really just trying to document, here's how you can build a business. Here's how you can be a good husband, a good father, a good businessman, a good real estate agent, a good investor, you know, all of it, right? Yeah. Um, so I got started on Snapchat. Of course, Facebook back in my, you know, college days when you <laughs> had to have a, uh, you know, a university email <laughs> yeah. to get in. Uh, and then Instagram came along and now YouTube. I mean, it, we're literally now on all the platforms yeah. and, uh, and I do a little bit everywhere. I don't focus all of my attention on just one. And for me, you know, this is one thing that I think a lot of people think that you have to do. Honestly, man, if I could go back, I would just focus on one, maybe two at a time because they're all basically the same. The, the big difference is how you treat them and how you communicate with them, right? What works on TikTok now doesn't always work on Instagram. It's a different audience. It is, it's a totally different platform, to be honest, right? Everyone just thinks of it as short form video. Well, yes, but no. <laughs> yeah. So. No, and I've noticed you've definitely opened yourself up to YouTube, which is a completely different form, as you mm. mentioned. And if I'm if I'm not if I'm correct, are you Clubhouse as well? Are you involved yeah. with Clubhouse as well? I mean, that's a whole different media where we don't get to show our face <laughs> and we right. don't get to you know smile at the camera. But it is a whole different platform. So you you kind of uh, creeped into one of the questions I was going to ask, and that is. Uh, it sounds like you prefer to stand out amongst your sphere of influence instead of trying to just capture, you know, everyone or across the, you know, states. And I'm sure you get some of that trickling in. But as you mentioned, you do a little bit throughout all the apps. So how do you choose what content to put on what uh, platform? Sure. Well, and, and I want to caveat this, too, with saying that you can't build a a great business strictly on social. Like you have to be a good person overall as well, right? So everything that we're going to talk about today as far as social media should be a complement to your business. It shouldn't be a replacement. Yep. If you don't call your people, if you don't email your people, if you don't text message your, if you don't do the basics, right? Yep. Then you're missing the boat here. Now, granted, you can build a massive following and do a ton of business, but the people that already know, like, and trust you are on these platforms as well. So 80% of my business comes from sphere of influence, referrals from that sphere, as well as social media. So again, it's a compliment. I'm still making a ton of phone calls to my people, to my vendors, to try to figure out where those connections are. Um, and that's a really good point. I want to make sure we <clears throat> highlight that. Because 100%. a lot of people, especially when you hear social media, people talk about it. They want to give you all this advice on social media. But yes, you're right. We miss sometimes that. That just is a compliment, the hard work that we're doing on the back end as well. Calls yeah. and all of that. So. And there's been super successful you know, realtors and agents out there, real estate professionals that have made a ton of money strictly from social media marketing. So let's not yeah. be confused right there. Like you said, there's boundaries to all this. But I think what frustrates most people about social social media is they don't see the immediate impact. Yeah. It's we're in a very microwave society, right? And if I can't have it now, then I get, you know, <laughs> beat up and put down and then I say it doesn't work. Well, social media I like to refer to it as like your digital farm, right? So for you realtors out there, you have 300 to 500 homes that you hit with postcards and they're in your neighborhood or in their in your community that they see your face regularly on some, you know, front, if you will. Social media is no different. Yeah. You got to put in daily deposits 
um, across a ton of different channels if you want to have a big, big impact. But if you're just starting, one or two platforms should be your goal to really master because I think that you can become, you know, a social media master on one platform within a year. But you got to go super deep, super fast with it. And you got to really commit time to it. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so, you know, you're you're talking about, again, something that sounds like a huge time commitment, right? You're talking about <laughs> all the different platforms, how to choose whether you're doing, you know, short form or, or you know, doing a 25-minute YouTube video. Um, so with all of that time being spent there, obviously you have a private life, right? <laughs> you, have, you have a wife and beautiful kids, um, and I've seen you share some of that on social media. Hmm. How do you kind of keep that balance? I know there's a lot of of parents out there, a lot of people who are very social out there, and there is a balance that needs to be found, right, between mm -hmm. that, that work and, and play. So how do you find that on social media? Sure. And and again, another caveat here, what works for Matt LaMarche doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So I, you know, I respect everyone's personal decisions. And I don't think that, you know, you can't build a business on the back of social media because you don't show your kids or yeah. because you do show your kids. Like, that's not the point here at all. You have to determine for you what's perfect for you. What's perfect for me is not perfect for you. And so we got to really dial in, A, where do you like spending time? Like, what's your natural platform of choice? If you enjoy watching YouTube videos about stuff, you're probably going to be a really good content creator because you've consumed that content. If you spend an hour a day on Instagram consuming, you know, that short form video that we talked about and, and what used to be pictures and little lo longer form video, you may want to start with Instagram. But for me, the, the, there's a very fine line. Um, I share my kids and I share my family life because I want my clients to see that I'm a dad, right? I'm not the best dad in the world but I'm trying to become, right? Absolutely. It's always a work. It's just like our business, right? Yep. We're never done. The work is never done. And so, you know, showing them at different stages of their lives, showing my, I think my son's hilarious, showing off what he says and what he does, <laughs> you know, I think relates and makes me relatable to a lot of people, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and then the second piece of this, I think, is safety for you, right? So if you're someone that is, um, you know, scared or has fear around social media or has maybe had bad experiences in the past, I would say don't share that stuff. You know, the, there does need to be some delineation between, you know, your private life and your public life. Um, and so I, I think it's different for everyone. For me personally, a lot of my clients have kids. A lot of my clients are, you know, very close in age to my kids and, and to me myself. So, you know, I think showing that makes me, again, someone that they can relate to. But also, um, it's just a different side of me that not everyone gets to see. Yeah. No, no, no. I love that. And I think, I think you're right. A lot of the people that I follow as well on social media, whether it be, you know, real estate or some, you know, a business owner or something like that, I notice there is a level of, of kind of finding that blend, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you're just the, the web, the, the social for the business, you know, which is going to be a little more driven towards towards just what they represent. You know, when you talk to people or leaders, you do want to see kind of that balance. That is our life now, you know, yeah. and I think that's changed a lot. For I mean, sure. I think there used to be a level in real estate where you just wanted to be on the on the bench. You mm -hmm. wanted to look business, business ready. <laughs> you wanted to be known for your numbers. And now, I mean, you really have to show a little bit more of your life. So and, and that makes sense. Um, so kind of going to that, sounds like you've figured out that balance. Uh, you kind of know what, at least you're working towards what you know now, right? I understand For it. Sure. I've never, the learning never ends. Um, but I would ask you, what would be some advice you'd give, uh, you know, a person who's just entering the business, um, as opposed to maybe someone who is successful in their career, just hasn't tuned into that social media for those two different clients. What would you advise each one? Yeah. I mean, so as a new agent, you know, especially if you don't know anything about real estate outside of what it took to pass the test and get your license, mm -hmm. I would say go out and fail and fail a lot because the faster you fail, and especially with social media on your on your different platforms, you're going to have a different audience, right? The people that you engage with every single day on social media could look exactly like your sphere of influence, your friends, your family, your colleagues from the past, or they could be the complete and total opposite. And the more dialed in on your audience you get, the better creator you're going to become. And there's a lot of different ways that we could unpack this, you know, very practically or tactically, but you know, on say Instagram, there's, there's the poll feature, you know, which one are you? Are you a, uh, you know, are you a burger lover? Are you a hot dog lover? <laughs> like you, this sounds crazy, yeah. but I've got such great context now for my, you know, almost 5,000 followers that 
engage with me on a daily basis through Instagram, I now know how to speak to them. And some of them may never buy real estate from me or use me as their agent. But at the end of the day, they might refer me yeah. just because of that level of engagement. So if you're new, again, I'll go back to the document versus create. I wish I had done a better job in my first year of creating longer form videos about my daily life. I was out in the market. I was looking at houses every single day, every single day. Once yeah. I sold my lawn care business from like the end of March to like the end of the year, I was either working open houses, I was calling everyone in my sphere of influence, or I was out looking at houses. And what that did for me was it really gave me better context for the market. And this was before, you know, the last two years, the market was still white hot four years ago when I started. Yeah. And so, you know, even though we were in a very heavy seller's market and now even more so, the market was moving and I had to move with it, right? I had to kind of get an idea of where are we going with this whole thing? Where are values headed? What happens when interest rates go up half a percent? How do people respond to that, right? Um, so go back, document as, as much as you can, and then find that platform. Because if you can find something that you enjoy being on and spending time on and engaging with people on, you're going to be that much better a creator, for sure. I like that. I like that. And you said find your platform. I think that is really important because let's say I've met some 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 newbies to the industry and they complain to me about how are you putting so much content on Facebook? I hate putting content on Facebook. I don't get much response on Facebook. I get four or five likes and you're getting, you know, over 100 likes or whatever. You know, that that is interesting to me because you're right. You're wasting time. If you're not if that's not your sphere, if that's not who's going to eventually be buying from you or selling or, you know, let's say even connecting you with others, mm -hmm. then that that you should figure out where you are. I mean, if you're, if you're good at dancing and doing those videos, get on TikTok. TikTok you it know? is. <laughs> if you get nervous in front of the camera, there's Clubhouse. So yeah, That's you're right. right. You do have to find your your niche there. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other side, the advice to someone who is already probably successful and doing well. However, they haven't um, hit that social media game. Mm. I've met people who are, especially five years ago. Likewise, I I use social media a lot to attract. Uh, to stay present in my sphere and attract those referrals or buyer sellers. Um, but I've, I've had people come to me and say, you know, I do good business. I don't feel like I need to get on it, but I feel like I'm, I'm being left behind. Sure. And now especially they're feeling that, yeah. um, especially with COVID and all of that that mm -hmm. happened, we became very reliant on our cell phones, computers. So what advice would you give someone who maybe was reluctant before, is starting to show some interest? So I would think that differs a little bit from the newbie or, or what would you uh, say? No, 100%. Well, if you've been in this business for more than you know say a newer agent for like a year or two you're a veteran right like we're all learning on some level but everyone's vulnerable you know there's a ton yeah. of agents out there that do not treat this like a business and that this is just a hobby or a part-time job even and mm -hmm. i'm not being critical i want to make this a hundred percent clear that the people that have been in this business for a while that haven't built their business or haven't used social media to build their business they're vulnerable we're all vulnerable yeah at some point our lunch can be taken from us, <laughs> right? And I don't mean in the spirit of competition, I mean in the spirit of collaboration. Because mm -hmm. like you mentioned Clubhouse, for me Clubhouse has been an, an amazing way to connect with other agents, not just around the world and, and around North America and, and within the United States, but here in, in Atlanta, there are tons of agents that I would never met if I didn't get on Clubhouse. And there's a real sense of that collaboration on Clubhouse. You know, all these other platforms that, especially new agents, I think see someone like me or you with thousands of followers and they're like, well, I got to build it. I got to do the way Matt did it. I got to do... No, you got to do the way that you do it because mm -hmm. that's how... You don't have to have a ton of followers to sell a ton of real estate, right? Yeah. But everyone's vulnerable. Uh, everyone's always vulnerable. And what built your business for you over the last 10 years is not going to sustain it for the next 10 years. Just yeah. plain, pure and simple. The way that we sold real estate in 1970 is very different than the way that we sell it today. So... Things have changed, and you got to keep. Move. It's just like the market. You got to move with the market. You got to. You got to go where the attention is, and yeah. go ask ten of your friends how much time they spend on social media, oh, and yeah. then tell me that it's not worth your investment. Now I hate that uh, iPhone update that tells you now. It's like how many hours you've been on your phone an extra three hours, and usually I'm like, how is that possible? I was already most of the time on it. Um, so listen, I'm catching everything you're throwing here, and I'm going to tell you there's a lot of what you're saying, and you already brought up his name once. So my next question was going to be, what are a couple of your social media gurus that you follow or are inspired by? But I already see you're talking very much here on on Gary V, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of evolution, of mm -hmm. not being left behind. You're 
and you know, for lack of a better way to phrase it, and I'm sure he'd phrase it even more more uh, directly, but you're an idiot if you're not jumping on the things that people are are, are really invested in. So let me just kind of, wh- how, why does he inspire you and what others would you say inspire you? Yeah, so I found him and his content probably a year before I started my lawn care and landscaping business. And I don't know why, but like you said, his directness yeah. really spoke to me. Mm-hmm. For those of you familiar with the disc profile, I'm a high D, a little bit of I in there. But, you know, if you want to sell to me, you go directly to the point. You tell me the value. You show me the results. And we're done, right? Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three-minute sale. Um, but for me, I think it was his delivery. But I'll be honest, when I first listened to him, the first month or two, I was like, this guy's a joke. Like, he's selling some course or some book or some program and and I'm just waiting for it to come right well a year goes by and I'm like it still hasn't come like wh- where's the j- where's that hook like where's the where's the sale coming right and it never came and so you know he he released some books and stuff and he talked about how he goes about uh, you know, writing like a, a book like Jab, 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 Right Hook, which is the idea of give value, give value, give value, give value, and then eventually ask for the sale. Don't expect it. Mm-hmm. When when nothing is expected, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> when your expect- expectations are zero, they're always met. <laughs> Absolutely. So for me, a lot of his content spoke to that. And I'm, I'm, uh, I love, well, I think one of his best sayings is you can't build the biggest building by tearing the other buildings around down. Right. So in real estate, obviously, it's a hyper competitive, you know, full contact sport here in Atlanta, especially right now. And I'm not interested in what you're doing. I'm not interested in the games you're playing. I'm not interested in your following or how you're going about getting your business. I'm so focused on Matt LaMarche and his brand and his bills, his business and his legacy that I could really care less what you're doing. Yeah. But it also means that I'm not going to tear you down at any point. Like I have nothing negative to say about any agent in Atlanta or beyond because that's not my game. I'm playing a different game than most agents are. And comparison is the thief of joy. That's the other comment yeah. I would say is that uh, there's way too many people looking at other people and, and comparing themselves. And that's a huge, and I'm guilty of it. I was in my first year or two, I was super, super guilty of it. Yeah, no, you know, you can get caught up in that game. I'll, I'll say as someone that's, been involved in in Atlanta Realtors Association and seen you around as well. I got to say, it's one of those things that I admire about you is you do, you walk with not an air of yourself. You are here to help. And especially when you are involved with organizations like this, we're here to help other members, right? Mm. Uh, One of the things I always tell agents is, listen, I'm here to help. I don't care what brokerage you're with or what area you service or if you service or if you're trying to get into a building that I'm in, I'm confident in what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I'm not for someone, it could be for you, right? And there's enough business for everyone. So I I definitely hear what you're saying there. Um, I love it. So let me see. We're, we're kind of getting close to wrapping up here, which is, is, is amazing to me. A lot of good tidbits. But uh, there's a couple questions I want to ask, and I think we can do a little bit of like a rapid fire here. Perfect. Okay? I love it. Yeah, let's All do right. it. Let's do it. So these will be a little fun. Let's, let's see what we get. Um, tell me your least favorite thing about social media in real estate. Uh, I think the fact that people hide on social media. Like, mm-hmm. look at the word social media. Media is print pictures, videos, your voice, that's the media, right? That's the medium that you're using. Social. Yeah. I comment on a lot of people's stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I engage with people, right? Even if they don't engage with me, if, if I find their content engaging, I engage with it. If it stops my scroll, I engage with it. Yeah. So don't forget the first, <laughs> the first part of that. This can be all push marketing. Push is, you know, we're forcing it at you. Yes. Or I can use pull marketing. If I walk up beside you right now and I'm like, man, you walk with me this way. Your tendency is to walk with me. Yeah. But if I put my hands up in front of you and I start to push against you, your initiation is going, your, the, the first thing you do, the initial thing you do is to push against me because I've put your guard up, right? Yeah. And social media is no different. But there are way too many people, A, hiding on social media, I think, and then B, using it as a tool to further hide what's going on. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of real people on, you know, these platforms right now. Yes. That you see sometimes more of the cars and the... Uh, the highlight and reel. The, and the clothes. Everyone's, and the, I know. Yes. Look, I'm guilty of it, too. When I first got on these platforms, I was like, let's show this new car and let's show the house uh-huh. I just sold and all this. 
our, our sphere of influence, the people that follow us are following us for a reason. The sooner we find out that reason, the better our content's gonna be. I love it, I love it. So the most ridiculous video you've posted that got the most attention you did not expect? Oh man, okay, so I, I had a listing, actually I was in a listing presentation and I ended up getting this listing eventually, but this guy told me he wanted $50,000 more uh, and I went on my, my Instagram stories and I told the story of this guy wants six hundred uh, and fifty thousand dollars. I told him the house is worth six hundred. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure other agents out there can connect, and you know, this is relevant to you. Like you felt this kind of pain where you're like, I, "There's just nothing I can do." You're unreasonable with your price, right? And and I'm very, very honest with my clients about the types of results that we can get, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't think we can do it, I don't even. I'd rather disappoint you now than later on, right? Yeah. But I told that story, and about I don't know two weeks earlier. Uh, another um, listing appointment I was in um, called me to the carpet on it. And I was like, well, I wasn't even talking about you. Like uh -oh. the, these were two different people, two different areas, not even close to the same, you know, house. And, and uh, I got called on it. I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This is the problem when you put out and when you talk as much as I do, <laughs> people have no idea what you're talking about. So I had to apologize. And, and I, I take full responsibility, by the way. Like yeah. if something is, is misconstrued or miscommunicated or misunderstood, that's on me. Yeah. That's not on the audience. How could I blame them? They're the ones that are just there. They're along for the ride, right? Yeah. So I apologized profusely. I was like, no, 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 no. That wasn't you. That was a different client, and and I'm just trying to be realistic with everyone here. I can't hide, you know, what the numbers are. I don't want to be that guy that makes promises he can't keep. I love it. I love it. All right, and final question, and you can just you don't have to explain too much because I don't want to get you in trouble. But <laughs> the one social media platform that you would get rid of if you could, or that you're glad that is not around anymore, oh, what would man. that be? Snapchat was so good to me. I, I hate to say it, but honestly, it just became so weird. Was it the so bunny filters? Yeah. And like, is that what the you loved ears about it? And the noses. I don't know. The filter, the the uh, the 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 UI and the UX, the user experience and interface on that application was bananas for the time. Yeah. Uh, and now Instagram and TikTok and a lot of these others have kind of understood and accepted and you know redeveloped some of them, but. Yeah, Snapchat. I could do without Snapchat now. All right. I love it. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. So I have um, just want to give you a quick minute to uh, give us kind of some final words, parting words, and let us know your handle on, on the social media so we can find you. Yeah. Well, so my current platform of choice, two platforms of choice are Instagram and YouTube. Um, you know, just in the last 90 days, really just in February, we created about uh, $6 million in, in sales uh, via YouTube, which wow. was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I've only been doing it for three months. So again, this is not something you're going to be doing for years and years and years. Um, so I'm really enjoying YouTube. Um, I have a, you know, kind of like a personal brand channel on there, if you will. It's just Matt LaMarche, uh, Atlanta real estate agent. And then um, on Instagram, at Matt period LaMarche, L-A-M-A-R-S-H. I'd love to have anyone and everyone you know, DM me and, and tell me what their takeaway was from today's episode. Absolutely. And trust me, there is so much more to learn about about Matt. You'll you'll learn if you're following him and looking at his stories. And now I'm going to go back and see if I can find some of these Snapchat <laughs> videos that uh, you're talking about here. Um, but just want to thank you again for coming you. on and, and uh, the work that you do and, uh, you know, the, the, the work you do to inspire others in the industry. I appreciate well, it. Well, no, so. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, everyone, that wraps it up for us on this episode. And we hope you join us for the next one. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown. Please subscribe. And for more information on how to get engaged, check us out at atlantarealtors.com. We look forward to having you join us for the next episode.